Great, great. Well, this is our presentation on concrete repair and protection or asset management of concrete buildings. Uh, we are limit, quite limited with time today, so it is going to be um, a very sort of concise overview. But as Ethan said, any questions after the presentation, please feel free to ask. So we're going to kick off with a quick, quick introduction to SEEK and covering all the target markets of ours as well. BS standard, which will play a pivotal part throughout. Causes of concrete damage and, and, and why buildings deteriorate. And then how we assist with that, starting from the initial survey and then repair and protection and solutions and, and materials, which fall under what we seek a dub our total corrosion management solutions. Uh, we're then going to have a look at an array of, sort of successful projects of ours. Uh, learning CPD aims of today, as I said, cover BSE N1504, key stages of concrete repair and protection. Uh, a few other things there as well, as I said, our total corrosion management, which we're sort of very excited about at Seeker, and that, that is our our systems for sort of treating and um, manipulating and of, of corrosion. Um, so to, to kick off a bit of company introduction of us and who, who we are. Um, Seeker here in the UK, uh, we have three sites, concrete repair and protection, which we're, we're looking at today. Um, it is manufactured in, in Well and Garden City. As well as that, we have a, a couple of other sites up in Leeds and our roofing is, is over in Preston. So these are the, the departments within Seeker or what we, we call internally our target markets. Uh, engineered refurbishment is obviously what, what we're here to talk about today, so refurbished concrete. Um, but as well as that, we're also involved in, in new build concrete, uh, provided admixtures as well. Uh, to concrete manufacture and um, waterproofing we're very fa you know famous for our our seeker basement waterproofing solutions and that, that's how we started out uh, roofing where uh, we acquired liquid plastics we have the, the very popular sort of liquid applied plastics we also have um you know sinophil and, and different applications for roofing as well as i said all that is manufactured um over over across in preston Flooring, which links nicely with, with us in engineered refurbishment. We have Seeker screeds and, and car park solutions as well, and car park decks, etc. All that, all that falls under the flooring department. Uh, Sealing and bonding, as it's called there, but also trade name Everbuild. So you know, stack right down to sort of your standard DIY patio, um, you know, products for patios, polyurethane adhesives, all sealing and bonding. Um, products that, that fall under the DIY section of our business. Industrial, the also automotives, for example, and um, sealants and bonding agents that are used to, to bond car, car windshields to cars and things like that. And um, so we're involved in, in the industrial sector as well. And finally, the most recent and newly acquired is building finishing. So we recently acquired the company Parex and they provide render and EWI. Um, which is a close match to us on asset management of buildings. So it's a, a sort of the final piece to the puzzle, re actually finishing the building, but an even closer, closer link to us, which we're going to get to in the presentation is sort of historic, historic mortars as well that are provided uh, by Parex. So this slide here just shows more of a holistic overview of everything that's covered or that falls under our engineered refurbishment department within Seeker and um, from your standard primers, mortars, to corrosion inhibitors and then protective coatings throughout hydrophobic impregnations. So that's just a snapshot of, of essentially everything that, that that you can you can specify or procure through our department within Seeker. And we're gonna we're gonna cover all of these. So just to start off with the standards, more more sort of housekeeping slides really, just to to get those out of the way, I guess. Um, this is what we conform to, and if you look at sort of any council documentation now, specifications that, that go out from local authorities, and um, you'll see that, that they now conform to this for concrete repair. BSEN 1504 is key, uh, particularly parts eight and nine. Anything you ask of us, a seeker, area manager, anything you want us to get involved with, which is of course is no obligation, everything will refer back to this. All product and date sheets that go out, you know, a fully CE marked and everything we try and do is in line with this standard. 
Um, so moving on from that, we're going to look at causes of, of concrete and deter you know, why it actually deteriorates. The science behind concrete repair before we then look at how we actually try and treat this. So chem just to categorise the different types of concrete deterioration, it's chemical attack that's actually causing corrosion. Uh, mechan mechanical and physical attack are influenced in it, but it all stems from the chemical attack. And the two different types of corrosion we're going to look at today are carbonate, carbonation and chlor or chloride ingress or chloride attack. These are the two different forms um, of, of attack, I suppose, of concrete that, that at the start of a project we're looking to identify you know, why that concrete is corroded. It helps us with our specification, um, which is key. And, and this is sort of pivotal for us in, in concrete repair. So, so when concrete's first poured, it's quite high in alkali, around 12 and a half to 13 and a half pH. At this point, there's a, a passive iron oxide or iron oxide layer, um, which in layman's terms means the, the reinforcement that you can see there that's embedded within the concrete is being, is being protected. Over time, um, carbonation and chemical reaction begins to occur. The propagation stage is essentially CO2s, chlorides and other let's call them nasties penetrating within the concrete and these elements combined with the calcium carbonate that that's within the concrete all react to, to cause corrosion you can see rust forming there on the rebar and because rust is less dense than metal it expands outwards now this is what puts that initial um, strain on the concrete it's, uh, itself and, be, and, and cause it to start cracking and spalling from this um, from this rust and um, rust that's less dense that starts expanding. From that, naturally, we're into the deterioration stage, as, as, as you probably guess. And from that, the concrete starts to um, this is where the concrete starts to, to crack and spall. All of this is defined under what can be called a, a carbonation front, which is essentially just the duration time it takes um, it takes to to start corroding. Chloride ingress uh, is very similar, requires the presence of both chlorides and oxygen. Um, and, and the way that the two work together, carbonation and chlorides, are a precast, precast manufacture. Um, so any precast concrete that you might use, concrete panels, say on the front of a building, they, they will actually have, you know, they could actually have chlorides in the manufacturing stage of those. So they would test quite high in chloride. Um, although these are relatively safe, Although, although, although would record quite high, um, from the presence of actually the carbonation, these chlorides can migrate into different, let's call them zones within the concrete, um, and then and can then become harmful. Chloride attack is, is much more um, is much more aggressive. It can be can be sort of tenfold um, from natural carbonation. Sorry, just going back to that slide. Can be can be. Um, yeah, much more aggressive, almost tenfold. Um, if you think of sort of uh, bridge structures, buildings close to the sea, basements of swimming pools or car parks, um, they're always you know, great projects for seeker, as you can imagine, where, where chlorides are typically high from either de-icing salts or natural chlorides from the sea. And um, so, so that just sort of categorises the difference between the two. Before we go on to then look at, at really. Um, how we sort of specify and treat and treat these different types of corrosion. Um, so this that leads us nicely into survey and assessment, which which we advise at the start of every project. Are uh, typically called condition surveys within the industry. We don't actually offer these ourselves within Seeker, but we, we would always advise on them. Um, percussion testing or hammer testing. Not all corrosion is visible. That helps, you know, identify the full scope of the works. And in the first instance, just makes areas safe. The spray in the top right-hand corner, the purple spray, you can see there, um, that's a test to identify how how carb, I suppose how carbonated the concrete is, how far along it is on this carbonation journey. We said, you know, it, it could, it's acidic at the start, but it, it's a journey towards it. It, uh, sorry, it's an alkali that starts a journey towards becoming more acidic. That's finding out the sort of pH levels of the concrete, and um, whether it and you know whether it has become carbonated. 
Uh, the bottom center image you can see there. You, you've probably guessed it. That's all there is just finding out the amount of cover from the substrate back to the reinforcement. How much how much um, cover there is there, um, and what we'd need to specify because of that, and how much you know how much more needs to be applied, um, and then chloride testing, which is much more in depth than sort of your standard carbonation building testing. Um, chloride testing looks at, you know, it might be half cells. So on a building, dare I say, chloride testing is quite blasé. We're only really looking at certain elevations and and how high the, the chloride content is per mass of cement. It might, and it, it just has to be above one percent, which does sound quite blasé. But but that figure would actually be quite high in infrastructure projects that we also do get involved with. Although we're looking more predominantly at buildings today. You would look at an entire structure, it might be an entire car park soffit or bridge soffit, and, and a chloride test would identify the actual hot spots of, of where chlorides are. All of which helps us be a lot more efficient with our specification. Where do we need to specify certain corrosion inhibitors, which, which you know, if we're being more efficient like that, it's, it's more in line with sort of the client's budget and, and helps us do a lot more. Um, helps us determine, the, you know, testing helps determine the objectives and options that are available as well with a structure. As I said, this, this is all based around asset management of structures, how far we can prolong them based on budget and our total corrosion management guarantee. An option, you know, might, might be demolition, unfortunately. It's always a fine line between a great concrete repair project and demolition. Um, and it's just this uh, slide here just categorizes sort of fact all the factors to consider health and safety as i said uh, percussion test in the first instance just to actually make the areas safe um, and all done against cost as well Few passing slides here, just just to note really on on health and safety from serving serving assessment. Just on sustainability as well, we will get to some some more sustainable laws of ours uh, just as the presentation comes on, which we're we're excited to tell you about. Um, so we're now going to go, we've looked at sort of surveying assessment of a building, we're now actually going to look into, into the actual physical repair of a building. Um, so these are sort of the principles on, on what we're looking to do. Um, and the different product codes of ours. Um, so all against, against the, the principles that we looked at before. Um, so increasing resistivity, resistance to chemicals and moisture control. We will look at that in, in from in terms of impregnation products and protective surfaces, control of anodic areas and sippy and anode through our different um, our different corrosion inhibitors that are involved there. And um, so this is a nice again holistic overview of sort of the different principles and everything everything that we cover within our our refurbishment range. Um, the aim of the, an actual repair is to reinstate defective concrete use of our corrosion management and strengthen and, and both protect the structure as well. So we're not just going to look at the repair product, we're not eventually just going to look at the repair products and corrosion inhibitors, but the actual final decoration of the of the scheme as well. Sorry, decoration of the, the projects as well. And so right, finally on to sort of solutions and materials. A good case study there of ours at, at London Shepherd Bush, a BT exchange. Um, so as I said, repair mortars in the main solution, other repair materials, um, corrosion management systems, protective coatings, and finally structural strengthening as well, which, which we're going to have a, a quick look at. So for building work, typically hand applied solutions are most common. We have different versions of those. It might be lightweight repairs for overhead use. We have stronger R4 curing mortars for, for you know, structural columns. We have rapid repair curing mortars if, if you were say doing a deck repair 
um, and you needed traffic over it quite quickly and um, that might suit it there we also have motors that can be used in cool temperatures as well i mentioned at the very start of the of the presentation we'd recently acquired um, a company called parex they they have brought in with you know through them we've got a, a range of sort of street motors um industrial motors for, for sort of rail and as well as that historic motors and we, we're finding ways of actually specifying um you know their stone repair motors as well to be used in conjunction with our corrosion inhibitors so that will be a big breakthrough for us um, to be able to to be able to use both you know, self-coloured motors but but with the technology that seeker has in terms of our corrosion inhibitors um, for more industrial probably more industrial applications we have sprayed concrete and um, we've just launched a, a general purpose rapid cure spray concrete we also have our 133f with fibers in so stronger sprays so please feel free to ask us about that and then for horizontal larger hori horizontal repairs as you can see there on the video playing we have our fluid applied pourable concrete obviously less labor intensive and um, that you're able to pour out again through parex we have a, a faster curing version of that as well and um, as well as that we have grouts and um, we use for sort of anchoring structural applications as well pore filler sealers um, and, and primers both for, for carbonated and, and chloride ingress as well Uh, so so now just just a more more basic applicator slides really we um, and everything that's covered in our specification surface prep we never advise the repair to be actually carried out in the void that you just saw there and um, you know we within our specification and alongside councils housing clients we always specify that that all the repairs as you saw on that image there are broken out at 90 degree angles and um, with the rebar fully exposed as you can see there um, and the, the system, and the you will be then ready to accept the first uh, product of our system as it so uh, which is a bonding primer and um, this all falls under our seeker monotop range and once once applied and um, we, we can then we can then look at applying the mortars that you just saw before the corrosion inhibitors this table here shows how the corrosion inhibitors work interestingly they don't actually stop corrosion per se they just slow it down to such a point that cor corrosion becomes pretty much negligible you saw right at the start of the you saw right at the start of the uh, presentation the different stages the propagation stage where where the elements uh, combine with the calcium carbonate and the concrete that that period there is just ex is just increased dramatically and um, so it just slows corrosion down rather than actually stopping it so we're going to look now at our total corrosion management and how they work so we said earlier all down to whether it's natural what i call natural carbonation or chloride ingress and um, the first up we're going to look at is natural carbonation so if the if the concrete's carbonated um, and as well it's on if the concrete is uncoated we can use our migratory corrosion inhibitor which you see there not very labor intensive quite easy to apply it can be done by brush roller or spray uh, the brand name of which is ferragard ferragard penetrates through the concrete and migrates towards the rebar forms a chemical barrier on that steel surface which protects the reinforcement and doesn't allow the elements to pass through that that you saw earlier if the concrete is coated we're not able to use the like dare i say easier migratory corrosion inhibitor so the alternative um, in lieu of ferragard for coated concrete is a vapor phased inhibitor or a margel capsule these are drilled in at certain centers along the concrete as you can see there and then they work they would work in a very similar way and um, they would vaporize and the element of which would migrate towards the uh, towards the rebar and offer protection if the areas are high in chlorides um we would you we would specify our galvanic zinc anodes that you can see there 
again sorry just going let's play this video first appreciate you have sound on Sorry, I keep going back to this one slide, but I'm going to go back to it again for the last time. So the slide with the with the rusted rebound, I mentioned rust is less than some metal, so it expands outwards. Um, these anodes work in the exact opposite way. If you could almost visualize a uh, big bits of zinc that you might have seen strapped to the front of a ship, um, rather than expanding outwards, these almost these implode in on themselves, so, so they're used in a sacrificial capacity. They're more reactive than the reinforcement that you can see there. So they will attract the chlorides, um, CO2, any again, any nasties would be attracted to the anode ahead of the reinforcement. And that's how they that's how they work in a sacrificial capacity. You can see the tie wires there and how they're used are tied to the rebar. If you were if you were if you were um guaranteeing just the actual repair that's been done there these anodes um would stop what's called incipient anode corrosion so that fresh high alkali concrete that's been placed into that repair if there wasn't the anode they would it would actually encourage corrosion around the repair in in, in years to come and, and not long you know it could be sort of two three to five years after um what the pre prevention of the anode does is it, it stops that incipient anode corrosion occurring around um, and, and that's how they work and that's how we're able to offer this total corrosion management guarantee we have different anodes available different types of anodes available and we're able to sort of specify 10 15 or 20 year material guarantee we're looking now at more um so what, what I would cut, what looks to be the XP anodes, which are actually put into the repairs, but as well as that, as well as as well as these anodes that go into the repair, um, we also have sacrificial CC anodes. So if you were, if if a client say was looking to um, guarantee the entire structure rather than just the repairs that were being carried out by the seeker approved contractor, um, a corrosion engineer could do a design. For those as well to be sacrificially drilled and inserted across the structure to gar to guarantee it, it you know the whole environment as opposed to just the itemized localized repairs. And I think we're just going to have a quick look at a video here showing the actual tie-in and installation of of an anode. As you can see, it does have to be connected to the steels there. And I believe following application will be a quick test. I think I'm to show it is to show it is working. There we go, fully encased as well within a mortar that, that will not corrode. Um, and that's, yeah, in a nutshell, the, in, the installation of the anode. So we've looked at, obviously, the, the science behind it, repair mortars, corrosion there, but it's final piece of the puzzle now is sort of the protective coatings and how they work. Um, not a criticism I have of Seeker, but something I think we could do a lot better is actually show these protective coatings in their own right. Um, they're often perceived within the market as more of just a masonry paint or a coating to, to what we've done, the repair that we've already done. They're not, they offer, you know, they offer so much more than that. They, they can be manufactured in any RAL. Um, they have elastomeric properties, so they allow movement within the building. But what, they, what these protective coatings do, or anti-carb coatings as they're also known as, is they don't let any element, elements pass through them. Um, so they themselves protecting against against corrosion they they themselves can extend the life of the structure of a building um, and we, we do offer these as well in their own, in their own right on a 10 and 15 year material guarantee 
different versions available more one of them that's more just of a rigid paint and then the elastomeric coating as i mentioned um which which does allow allow movement in the building and they are they are water based you can see project over there in, in, in halifax that, that we've we've shown um and again can be sprayed rolled or brush applied again all in line with the bsen standard that we mentioned at the start of the presentation Just more points that I've, I've already mentioned really about the 550, but, but just to know. Uh, the test of, of showing the actual carbonation from use of our uh, protective cones that you can see there over time against a standard, re, standard masonry paint or standard facade coating, let's call it. Um, so they really do work as well. I mean, they, they are the first line of defense there is surface protection um, so so before those corrosion inhibitors are even brought into play that's how they can work we do have other similar sort of products uh, the hydrophobes for example they're an impreg they work a little differently they're an impregnation product so these are these are water stopping products they would rather than sitting on the surface like the protective coatings they would impregnate with, into the pores of the concrete and then swell outwards they would stop any water ingress into the concrete but at the same time and the, the, the reason these products are so clever the hydrophobes is they have a, what's called a pumping effect in inverted commas so they won't let water pass into the structure but at the same time will allow any vapor to evaporate outwards so can help keep the can help keep the structure dry and there's a little video here on that process and how that works. As you can see, it sort of penetrates within five, six mil of the concrete. So the video is talking about the performance of the hydrophobes and how they work, but I think just a, another point really on, on them is, is more from an aesthetics point of view. You know, if you want to pr protect a, a structure, but it's it's a natural concrete, natural look to the concrete without one of these opaque protective coatings, this is a way of doing it and having your seeker guarantee um, without having to change the natural look as much of the concrete as well. So. So worth mentioning as well. The hydrophobes are also great behind, you know, there's a lot of recladding of structures that are going on within the UK at the minute, in line with sort of Grenfell make safe. Um, that unearths obviously concrete concrete beams and decks below. If you are if you know if you are carrying out those repairs, the hydrophobes are a great product because it, it stops any water ingress into the, the concrete below, but um you know, facades like that, rain screen claddings can encourage condensation. So these are these are always a good product to sit behind those sorts of applications as well. Uh, so moving on, we're going to look at the anti-graffiti product within Seeker. There's a, a quick video here to show it to show its performance. A very versatile product it can be used on all those different substrates as you see there as well as that it can be used pre or post graffiti if that makes sense so you can use it to sort of future proof areas from graffiti or obviously it can be used to to remove graffiti that's already on there and the next product up in these i nearly called them sundry products to our department that will be doing them a massive disservice they are very specialist and um, is structural strengthening which we're, we're all we're also involved with 
and out we have our CFRP or carbon fiber um, products. Two versions available, the plate that you can see there that is more, used more for sort of flexural applications. And then we have a wrap version as well for shear. And the CFRP, we have a design tool for as well that's made by engineers for engineers. So it takes away all that sort of back and forth with us, the manufacturer on a live project. You can you know, specify your changing and, and calculate um, loads, whatever it may be um, on that tool there. And you can see sort of some typical applications for us. A good one is, is obviously wrapping columns. Um, we've got a live project at the minute, Salford Keys in Manchester, where a client has been able to add an extra story on some new build apartments that were 12 stories originally, um, just by a structural engineers designed for carbon fiber wrapping of, of columns. So I'm imagining that is much, you know, much cost effective as opposed to sort of different ways of doing that. Um, and then typical social housing would be sort of using the plates below, below stairwells and um, things like that. And you can see a few access hatches and beams as well, strengthening of car parks and whatnot that is also available. So please, you know, please speak to us about the hydrophobes, uh, anti-graffiti and, and obviously the structural strengthening as well, which is a, you know, a big growth market for us at, at CQ UK. Um, sorry, this just, this just shows the, the design tool that I mentioned, free to use and download. Uh, we have a, a user guide for that as well. Um, and as I said, it calculates the amount of CFRP needed based on either flexural or shear strengthening. Um, and column confinement as well. So uh, very straightforward to use for an engineer. Just going to close now with a couple of successful case studies of ours. And um, before I do that, there's a specimen of our material guarantee that we offer, as I said, on based on 10, 15 or 20 years systems for our, what we call internally our total corrosion management solution. And that just shows a, a specimen available there. Yeah, forgot this was in there. I was describing the uh, the project, uh, the live project at Salford Keys. This was a wrapping of the uh, of the columns, which has enabled the client to go ahead and build those uh, penthouse apartments that you see at the very top. Uh, less glamorous is this one. Bread and butter for us, really. Social housing balconies. As you can see, there's an existing coating on there already. We're not able to use the easy, less labor intensive corrosion inhibitor Ferragard, the migratory spray. So we've had to use the Margel capsules and then top the coating up based on a 10 year um, total corrosion guarantee for that housing client. Um, a building in the Wirral, I think we, we, we show this as a case of it because it, it probably looks like an EWI panel there or, um, so it, it's not it's not a cladding. It is our elastomeric coating that's being done at a certain design. Although I appreciate not for everyone. Um, that's it. Yeah. So thanks for sitting in. Really appreciate your attendance today. Um, as Eva said at the start, that there's going to be a, a Q and A session now. Um,